life is such a fragile thing, and it's so short. If you look at it in terms of the suffering that's involved, it seems awfully long. But if you look at it in terms of the good you can do, it seems awfully short. Because so much of life is taken up with other activities, just keeping the body going, finding food, clothing, shelter, medicine to take care of its needs. That consumes a huge amount of our en energy right there. It's important to think about this. That's why we have that chant, subject to Ill aging, subject to illness, subject to death, subject to separation. It applies to all of us. Then leading up to, I'm the owner of my actions. It's the, the, our actions are the only things we have to hold on to. Our own body slips away from us, friends slip away from us. And all we have left is our actions. So look to it that while you have the opportunity, you do your best. One of the traditions of the Noble Ones is to delight in developing and to delight in letting go, in abandoning. In other words, to delight in developing good qualities of the mind and to delight in abandoning unskillful qualities in the mind. This is the kind of activity that really has some substance to it. Because everything else you look at, it just keeps slipping away, slipping away, slipping away. It's a sutta where the Buddha talks about all the amazing things in the world, political power. No matter how big it gets, the person who's wielding that power is subject to aging, illness, and death. Even when you go up to the realms of the devas, you said there's one realm that even when the universe devolves, that particular realm is still there. But still, for the devas in there, they, they're subject to passing away as well. He says, you reflect on these things and it should give you a sense of dispassion, disenchantment. And realizing that there's even the point where he says that the Buddha himself teaches the way to the freedom from all these things. And even then there are people who accuse him of lying, of not telling the truth, of not having the welfare of all beings at heart. Just look at this human realm. This is the way the human realm is. You do the best you can for them, and still they attack you. Another cause for disenchantment. But it's not to get you disenchanted with the Dharma, just to reflect on the fact that where we are is we're subject to all kinds of limitations, subject to all kinds of restrictions on us given this human birth. But we do have the opportunity to act. We have freedom of choice right here in the present moment. And what we want to do is explore that freedom, because that's the only area in our lives where there really is freedom. The body has us hemmed in on all sides. The limitations of life have us hemmed in on all other sides. But right here in the present moment, there's freedom. The opening, the door to the deathless lies right here. So exploring that, that's the best use of our time. And it means developing all the good qualities of the mind that are needed in that direction. It's not just the meditation, as the Buddha says. There's generosity, there's virtue, along with the meditation, that lead us in that direction, because they develop the good qualities we need to broaden our heart through generosity. To broaden our sense of our own responsibility and our own the power we have through our actions by observing the precepts. Those two practices help to develop goodwill, compassion, which the Buddha said is one of two of the doors to the deathless right there. Because the attitudes themselves, as they get more and more unlimited in the mind, form one of the doors. And then there are the various stages of concentration that we develop in the mind that has been nurtured through these practices of generosity and virtue. So wherever there's an opportunity to develop skillful qualities in the mind, make the most of it. We're in this human life. We're not just meditating. We're interacting with other people. So we try to do it in as skillful a possible way, 
as we can, looking for opportunities to do good, looking for opportunities to develop these skillful qualities in the mind. However far we may get in our practice, don't take that question as an obstacle. Just realize that this is not one of those paths that saves all of its rewards for the end. The rewards come all the way along. As our heart grows more spacious, we live in a more spacious heart. Right there, there's a sense of roominess in our lives that develops with the practice. As we become more responsible in our actions, we find that there's a greater sense of trust and security within ourselves. That inner trust is the most important thing we can have to rely on. It creates a solidity and the roominess that allows the mind to settle down and to feel spacious. So that we enter into concentration, we don't have to deny a lot. This is one of the reasons why generosity and virtue are so important as precursors for the practice. Because if you have a lot in your past that you have to deny, then when the mind begins to settle down, it, it turns into denial jhana or denial concentration. Big areas of your awareness get blotted out just so you can keep the mind concentrated, keep it focused. But with the blotting out, there comes dishonesty. With the blotting out, there comes an inability to see things for what they are. So look at this life as an opportunity to, to do what good you can in terms of thought, word, and deed. It's all part of the practice. Notice both of those chants, the chant on the five things to recollect every day and the four sublime abidings. They all end with reflection on action. We're the owners of our actions. What we experience will depend on the quality of our actions. So focus your attention right here on what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're thinking. And take every opportunity you can to make that as skillful as you can. Delight in developing the skillfulness in these areas. Delight in abandoning anything that's unskillful in these areas. When you can develop that, that delight, you find that the practice opens things wide open. This door for freedom, this door to the deathless here in the present moment, it gets more and more available. That's the one thing in our lives that really is roomy and spacious. I had a dream once in which I died, and the experience of death was that the world just suddenly gets tighter and tighter, moves in, moves in, moves in, and finally you don't have any place you can wiggle at all. And you jump out. Well, what you jump out? You jump out into another world, another state of becoming. And that seems spacious to begin with. It begins to grow, and then it begins to close in on you again. The opportunities available you to get more and more narrow. And then unless you've found this door here in the present moment, that's all you do is you just, just jump from one state of becoming to a next, which they keep closing in, closing in, closing in. And the only way you can resist that is by maximizing this sense of the potential for freedom here in the present moment, which starts with the freedom of your choice to do what's skillful. That's something that's always there. There may sometimes be limitations on exactly how skillful you can be in your actions and your speech. But the opportunity to choose the skillful way, the most skillful alternative available, that's always there. And it's in exploring that freedom that even larger freedoms become available. So learn to make your home here in the present moment so that you have access to that freedom as much as possible. If the present moment is a strange place and you just find yourself bouncing around bouncing off different limitations, the walls that the past and the future place on you. But if you learn to feel at home here, you get a better and better sense of where that opening where those openings are. And it lies right here in our freedom to choose what's skillful.